watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2018 in Los Angeles. And I'm joined now by Arpit Josipura of the Linux Foundation. Arpit, good to see you on Telecom TV again. Good to see you, thank you. Um, can we look at how open source and open networking and the Linux Foundation intersects with the, the telecoms world? Um, tell me more about the, the role and how you engage with telcos. Excellent. Uh, a year ago, uh, Linux Foundation came out with uh, something called Harmonization 1.0. That framework essentially uh, created open source projects that would harmonize with each other, as well as work cooperatively with uh, standards. And so we combined a set of uh, open source projects which really now are forming the basis of modern telecommunication systems. Today we have uh, projects like ONAP, and we'll go into details later, but projects like ONAP that uh, account for participation that enables over 60% of the global subscribers. So it's, it's hugely backed up by telecom uh, service providers, the big names, all of them, China Mobile, China Telecom, China Unicom, AT&T, Verizon, Vodafone, Orange, Reliance Geo, I can stop, I can go on. So. It's here, it telecoms, or the, the large, certainly the large um, carriers um, are invested in this um, and, and get it. Um, but how, how important are our partnerships? How important is it to the whole collaboration? You talk about harmonization. Um, and as I understand it, you want to take that harmonization further. Yes. So partnerships uh, form in two domains. The first partnership Linux Foundation has enabled is between the carriers and the vendor community. They collaborate work together in open source community and create this shared technology and investment, which gets to production very fast. Bell Canada put ONAP in production in less than nine months from inception, versus the normal two-year cycle you know, that we go through. So that's the first partnership. That has already been enabled. The second partnership is around open source communities and standards communities. And uh, both are relevant and they are complementary. Uh, they have different means to an end, but they are all relevant. So what we do is, at Linux Foundation Networking, we have started working with each of these standards community to create a framework where collaboration can happen. In 2017, we had announcements from ONF and MEF where we could partner on open source and open standards. At ONS this year, we announced partnership with TM Forum. And the best part of this partnership is it's focused on the APIs that interwork between the two communities. So if you have standards, you can put it in open source. If you have open source, you can make it standards. Easy. And why is this um, of benefit to telcos? What are they getting out of this at the end of the day? So open source creates three distinct values for the end, end users or the telcos or service providers. The first value is the speed to innovation, speed to services. As I said, we have carriers who have put open source code in production. Open Daylight, which is another project, is running over a billion subscribers in production today. Right, So it's speed to innovation, that's number one. Uh, the second big is the uh, partnership they can get with vendors so that they can actually collaborate and get things done uh, that do not go ping pong between, you know, hey, that doesn't work, this works, right? And then, of course, third is cost, which is if you standardize around a de facto open source standard, it is extremely, um, cheap because you're not retraining for five different vendors because it's all set up in a in a in an automated manner. So it's it's kind of a function of all three. And for an industry that has for for so long relied upon a, a very fixed and a successful standards process to to, to drive um, interoperable technology in global networks, um, open source changes things a little bit here, doesn't it? Is, 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 are we now at a stage where open source is kind of dictating where standards efforts should be applied. Uh, I wouldn't say dictating, but I can definitely say that it is creating a set of de facto standards mm. uh, in areas where uh, there's a lot of uh, interoperability and, and for lack of word, a lack of better word, plumbing needed, okay? okay? Mm. So open source is not currently going to go and say, I want the 6G radios as open source, right? And so, you know, that's 3GPP, there's a lot of Etsy, IEEE, OIF, so the, so the hard data plane connectivity problems 
standards are the right? Because you know, it requires investment, it, is, it doesn't change often. As you go higher up the stack into automation, orchestration, control, analytics, things change, right? Things change rapidly, they need to be uh, rapidly modified, and that's where open source makes a big difference. And I think that's where TNform comes in, MEF comes in, and they are recognizing and they are taking a big step to collaborate with us. Well, let's look at uh, some of the, the major projects that are of, of, of real interest and importance to, to telcos. ONAP, for mm -hmm. example. Um, t tell me more about how, how, how this came about um, with the Ecomp and OpenO and where it's, where, where it's going and what still needs to be done um, for more telcos to embrace it. Fair enough. ONAP is, stands for Open Network Automation Platform. Uh, if you look at the very simple architecture, telcos have services that run on infrastructure. And then the two today are connected extremely manually. There's disjointed tooling, right? So that layer of software needs to be automated. That's what ONAP gives you. Uh, and the moment automation happens, you have no touch, zero touch provisioning, services, closed loop, analytics, you know, ticket orders, service assurance, everything that a typical BSS function is doing, you get down as an automated order, right? So it's very critical for them to do that. And that's one of the reasons why uh, you have over 60% of the uh, global subscribers enabled by participating carriers, right? Uh, the next release of ONAP is, uh, is called Beijing, and that's coming out this summer. And it is heavily focusing on you know, scaling of the pro uh, project. It is heavily focusing on uh, getting a lot more uh, set up for 5G use cases, IoT use cases, et cetera. Uh, and then you know, every six months, the community decides what the next big things are. Arpit, as ever, very insightful. Thank you very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you very much, appreciate it.